how to install Ansible automation platform with internal database single node. First things first, login in your Red Hat account and download the setup file. For this example, I'm going to use the setup bundle that is more than one gigabyte to download it. Simply hit the button and wait the progress of the file in your local file system. It's going to take a while, depends by the speed of your network connection and uh, the performance of your system. Once the, thing, once the file is successfully downloaded in your system, actually you need to copy to the target machine. This machine uh, will be the system that uh, will host our Ansible automation platform. Consider that the installation with single database is the bare minimum, so basically all the controller and database will run from single machine. This is uh, good for texting and also for sm very small setup. If you have a more node to manage, consider to move to a different scenarios with external database or with more node in front. So first of all, let's launch our terminal. And as you can see, I already have the download file in the current directory. This is a simple tarball that I'm going to copy in my target machine. In this example, let me use SCP to easily copy the file to my host, that is host1.example.com. The time actually depends by the speed of your network connection, but it doesn't take longer if you are in a local area network. So, as I said before, this is a bundle package with everything inside, all the Ansible dependency and everything that we need to get it done. I choose uh, to run this package on RHEL 9, so Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 9, the latest available at the moment. So once the file is successfully copied to the target host, let me connect to the target machine and decompress with tar x vzf specifying the file name and in the end of the day i'm going to have a directory in the current uh, in the current directory with uh, all the file that we need there is also a readme file that basically pointed up to the online documentation so if you have any doubt please refer to this documentation that is the official Red Hat Ansible automation platform. Okay, the core file of everything, all the things that we are going to do are regulated by this inventory txt file. So we need only to configure some parameter to tell the installer what to do and what a successful install means for this uh, scenario. It can handle a lot of different scenarios. In this case, I would like only to configure an Ansible controller on this machine that is host1.example.com. There are a lot of different user cases uh, managed by this file and sometimes the syntax change a little bit version by version, but this is the bare minimum and I think that the basic concept apply to different version of AP. So first of all, uh, let me uh, con specify that this is an automation controller. Let me uh, insert the host name and also the node underscore type is a hybrid. So you can control the automation and also execute task inside of it. Uh, on if you have some node that only execute the automation, actually you need to specify under the execution nodes. So, for example, let's add the host name like uh, under this section. In my case, the automation controller will be able also to execute the f everything, so we don't need actually to specify anything more. What we really need to specify is some variable underneath. As you can see, we can specify other type of installation scenario, 
for example, Automation Hub, Automation Catalog, and a specific database, external database. In this case, the database will be saved in the current node internally. So let me specify, I don't need to, no, actually I don't need to specify any PG host. This is a Postgres host. Let me specify a password to connect to the database. The default is, uh, uh, we can use Red Hat for this scenario, but feel free to move to a very strong one. What we really need to specify is the registry username that correspond to your Red Hat uh, customer portal and as well the password. I'm not typing because, well, it's a sensitive information, but you really need it in order to download the latest release of the execution environment. Let me specify also Red Hat as a password for other part of this file. You can customize the password as much as you want and you can use a different password for different services as well. Uh, I do, this is for example the Postgres password for automation catalog and as you can see this file is pretty much self-descriptive because uh, it already contains a lot of example and it can guide our configuration. So once I typed all the necessary password, let me save a file straight away. This is a simple VI, so let me use only a colon W. And let me give a, another time a very short overview. So basically we set, the, we set up the Ansible controller to be host1.example.com. This node type is hybrid. And I was setting up the password of the admin user, the one, the master user of, um, of the system to be Red Hat. So once we are settled down with this, this is a bare minimum to configure AAP with internal database, a single host node. That is great for test purpose, also for development. And in general, you can run also as a virtual machine or uh, in any cloud provider. Let me remind you that the minimum for handling an automation controller at the moment is 8 gigabyte of RAM or memory, system memory, but there is actually a knack for being able to run if even in a smaller, in a smaller node. In this case, I think, yes, I think I'm able to run a successfully full automation controller with four gigabytes of RAM. Okay, once we are done, the next step is actually to execute the setup.shell that is present in the current directory. As you can see, the additional file that are, will be uh, used during the setup of our Ansible automation platform, AAP for friends. So let me launch straight away the setup.shell. As you can see, we ended up with an error because uh, the setup is not uh, able to access some file. This is because uh, I was trying to launch as a normal user. So let me switch with sudo su to the root user, the administrative user of Linux. So I'm able to completely execute the setup.shell. Well, we're you might end it up with this type of error that's saying that uh, AAP is not able to download some file. This is because this system was not registered with the subscription manager. So let me do straight away subscription dash manager register. Let me use my username in the Red Hat customer portal and specify the password. If you ended up still with 401 unauthorized, it might be that one of the reasons might be that you simply type the wrong password. It happened. I know this is not uh, the best error, but let me redo all the process straight away. So let me try to uh, subscription this manager register username, my Red Hat customer username, and let me specify my password. So basically what I'm doing here is connecting this machine to the Red Hat customer portal and 
uh, actually activate my subscription to the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. In this way, this machine is able to actually connect to the Red Hat Content Distribution Network, as you can see now was successful, so it's going to download all the repository index and all the packages from Red Hat are now available for this workstation. This means that all the system packages, uh, the one that control the user land, the kernel, are available for this machine. Previously was available only the one after the installation, now everything is sorted out. So um, now the system is successfully registered and we got a confirmation on screen and we are able to move forward of our Ansible setup. So let me execute again dosh, dot slash setup and see what happened. So the setup is going to move forward this time. As you can see, this is uh, the traditional output of DNF, the package manager of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. If you are familiar with previous version of Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, look like very similar to YAM, the previous package manager. There is a transaction as you can see. Now we can move forward. One of the first step actually of the setup procedure is to install Ansible and from with Ansible running some automation script that will configure our system straight away. Uh, during the first part of the setup is going to perform some uh, check just to verify that this system is actually able to have a successful installation of the Ansible automation platform. And you might end up with this error if a pre-flight check fails. This error is pretty, it's pretty famous because um, uh, happen when the machine don't, don't have enough memory as I said before, the bare minimum is now set to 8 GB and it might be a problem, especially in some development scenarios, run all this amount of memory for a specific virtual machine. So there is a small hack that we can do. This is not supported directly by that, but is good enough for a development process. So we can actually Trim this value, just modify the value that is set in a specific file under collection, ansible underscore collection, ansible, ansible, automation platform installer, rows, preflight, and under the defaults, the main.yml contain one number that is actually what is the minimum amount of memory for this installation that is. Uh, 7400 megabyte. Let me remove one zero so and execute again the setup.shell. This time the preflight check will not fail, so will pass, and the setup is going to move forward. Please expect a lot of time and a lot of different messages like this on your screen to be fair i was uh, speeding up the video because there is no point to showing up to you a lot of text on screen uh, just to demonstrate uh, that uh, i actually run the full setup but at the end of the day we are going to end it up with a successful ansible automation controller of the ansible automation platform with internal database as you can see, this process it might take a while because uh, there is a lot of things ongoing under the hood. The setup is actually configuring a Postgres database server and then start uh, installing all the Ansible packages, uh, starting the initial setup of all the necessary tables, uh, configuring all the necessary services and also uh, setting up the Ansible execution environment inside this, this host just for us uh, to be comfortable to launch our execution. So after longer text you might see some 
error, some uh, red code, but this is not an error actually because uh, the setup is testing different uh, uh, installation scenarios. So don't worry if you see some red. It means simply that is and the is the setup is actually testing some condition and was failing. But it doesn't mean that there are any failure in the installation. This might be very confusing, especially for beginner user, because uh, you are not you don't know exactly what to expect. But in the end of the day, if you ended up with this message that uh, you have a successful installation of the Ansible automation platform. So as you can see, the setup process completed successfully and this is a great achievement. From now onward, you are a proud owner of uh, one Ansible automation controller in one single host with an internal database and you are ready to move to the next step. Yay! Now all the difficult part is already done so let's move to a browser, hit type uh, the host name, in my case host1.example.com and accept the self-signed certificate and Great, you are a proud owner of a Red Hat Ansible automation platform. So log in with admin and the password that you insert in the inventory and you are good to go. Well, actually, first of all, you need to provide a license because this is a, a premium, uh, this is a product of a Red Hat and you need to have a valid license underneath. There are different ways of obtaining the AAP manifest file and if you don't have any, you can still request a try license. Once you sorted out uh, your license or connect directly to your Red Hat account, you can uh, use the manifest file and move forward on your automation journey. From now on, you are ready to move forward. Yay!